All right, you guys, here we go. This is lesson 1-4 on segments, rays, parallel lines, and planes. It's a, a lot of vocabulary one more time, so I just want to go over the vocabulary with you. Okay, first of all, a segment. This is the part of a line consisting of two endpoints and all the points between them. In other words, I have two endpoints and just the points that go between them. This is a drawing of a segment. Now, because I have points at the ends, we're going to name them. I'm going to use capital letters again. I'm going to name this A and this point B. So when I name the segment, we use the endpoints. And this time, I draw a segment line over it, no arrows. This is how I know it's a segment and a line, because it does not have arrows. Or you can write it backwards. It means the same thing. These are identical segments. Okay, a ray is like half of a line. It has one endpoint and the rest of one side of the line. So I start with one endpoint, and I have one part of the line that continues on. Now again, I have a point right here, so I'm going to name it. I choose to name this point X. Now, I'm going to need another point on this line in order to name it, so I choose this point. Let's call this W. Now, this is important when you name a ray. You must start with the end point. You must start with the end point when you name a ray. So when you name it, you must start with the end point. Where's the end point in this picture? At X. So I start at X. Which way is the line going? It's going towards W. So to show it's a ray, I just do half of a line, only one arrow. So even though you see this ray going to the left in the picture, when I name it, the arrow always says I start at the endpoint X. Here's my endpoint X, and I'm going the direction of W. And you have to be careful with this. It can be very confusing. Okay, lastly, let's talk about opposite rays. Two rays with the same endpoint that always form a line. I have to have the same endpoint. So I'm going to start with my endpoint. I'm going to draw one ray, less similar to XW. Let's make this X and let's make this W, just like this one. But now I need another ray, because there's two of them. I have to have the same endpoint, same X, and it has to form a line. So now I'm going to go the other way. Let's call this point Y. I have just formed two rays. Now it looks like I drew a line, but in reality, my opposite rays, which I abbreviate opposite rays, are. Now here's how I named them. Remember, we must start at the end point. XW and XY. Okay, this is how we name segments, rays, and opposite rays. I'm going to go over a couple examples with you to make sure you understand this. Okay, for my examples, I'm going to use this picture provided for you, right here. And I want to be able to name the segments and the rays in the figure. Now what I would like for you to do is go ahead and try to do this, pause it and try to do it on your own, and then compare my, your answers with mine. I'm about to do this right now, so if you want to try it on your own first, please do. Pause it, try it, compare and contrast. Otherwise, I'm about ready to answer the question. Okay, naming the segments and the rays in the figure. Um, 
I have a line, but on this line, I have parts of the line. First thing I'm going to start with are the segments. The first segment I notice goes from here to here, which is segment AB. Now, if I name this segment BA, it is the exact same segment, so I'm not going to rename it. The second segment I have in this picture starts at A and it goes to C. So I have segment AC. And the last segment I have in this picture starts at B and it goes to C. So these are the three segments I have in the picture. Okay, let's talk about rays. Now I have three points, point A, point B, and point C. All of them could be an end point. So let's start with point A. I could start with A, which is right here, and I could name the ray that goes in this direction. Now I could name this ray AB, which is the same as ray AC. It's the same ray because it's going in the same direction. All right, the next one I'm going to name starts at B and it goes in the direction of C. So I have ray BC. I have another ray that starts with endpoint B because I could start at B and I could go this direction as well. I have a point. So I could also name ray BA. Now I'm going to go to point C. I'm going to start at point C and I can only go in one direction. I'm going to go in this direction here. I could name it CB which, by the way, is the same thing as CA. It's naming the same ray. So these are my segments and these are the rays. Lastly, there was one pair of opposite rays in the figure. Those opposite rays were right here. Ray BC and ray BA. Notice they have the same endpoint, B. They're just going in opposite directions to form a line. Okay. One last section we have to kind of go over, and that is how do you name parallel lines, skew lines, and parallel planes? So I'm going to use this figure that I've provided for you. If you want to pause the video and draw this box to get ready to um, understand how to label it, I would take the time and do that. But in this picture, I'm going to start with parallel lines. I've color-coded the parallel lines in red. And parallel lines are coplanar. Now, don't forget, co means to share. Planar. Plane. Share plane, which means they have to be on the same plane. And if I look at the top of the box, E, F, G, H, I have two lines that do not intersect. And don't forget, this line intersect means to cross or touch. So two lines that do not cross or do not touch. And so my parallel lines, or segments in this case, are segment H, G and segment EF. Those are the two parallel lines. In my, my picture, they're the red lines, or the red segments. Okay, let's talk about skew lines. I like to say these, are, these lines are all skewed up. They don't make sense. And these lines I'm showing in green. 
These are my green lines in the picture. Okay, non-coplanar, not sharing a plane. So they're not on the same plane. They cannot be on the same plane. So what that means are they're not parallel and they are not intersecting. If you look at line AD or segment AD and you look at segment FB or BF, these segments will never ever cross and they are not parallel. Lastly, parallel planes, planes that do not intersect. I'm using for this picture yellow. I highlighted the yellow planes. My, these two planes are planes that will never touch. Intersect means to touch across. These planes will never touch and they will never cross. And so I can name plane A, D, H, E and plane B, C, G, F. These are the two yellow planes and they will never cross or intersect. All right, to give you one more example, we're going to use the same figure. I want to see if you guys can answer these questions before I do. So if you want to pause the video and try to answer questions 3, 4, and 5 based on the notes you just took above, then great. Otherwise, I'm going to answer these questions right now. Number three says, name all the segments that are parallel to BC. Now, I like to use colors. So the first thing I do is I look at segment BC, which I just highlighted in red. Now, parallel means that they will, they're never going to touch and they have to be in the same plane. Okay. So, all the lines that are parallel that were never touched, I'm going to highlight in red. This will never touch. This will never touch. And this will never touch. Basically, all the lines going in the same direction. So, the segments that are parallel to BC are FG, EH, and AD. Okay, name all the segments that are skew to AB. I'm going to erase this picture. I'm going to find AB. This is AB. And I want to remind you again what skew means. Lines that are skewed up. Skew means, I'm going to go back up. Skew means not parallel and not intersecting. So what I'm going to do to find my skew lines, I'm going to find the ones that are parallel and are touching. I'm going to find the ones that are parallel and are touching. Let's start the ones that are touching. These are the two points. Are there any lines touching these two points? Well, this line touches point A, and this line touches point A. Point B, lines that are touching. This line touches point B, and this line touches point B. That takes care of the intersecting. What about the parallel lines? Parallel to AB is CD. EF and HG. Now what I did is I highlighted all the ones that are touching and are parallel. What that leaves me are the ones that are skew. The skew lines are the ones that are not parallel and are not touching. So this line EH is skew. It's not colored. This line, HD, is skew. 
is not touching. This line, FG, is skew. It's not touching. And this line, GC or CG, is skew. It's also not touching. I've just named all the segments that are skewed to segment AB. I like to see the pattern. It almost looks like two L's that are parallel to each other, that are upside down. Almost like somebody's legs. Okay, I'm going to erase this to answer our last question. Very last one, folks, and then you're done. Okay, name a plane parallel to plane CDHG. I first have to find plane CDHG. So here's C. D, H, G. It's this plane in the back of the box. This is the plane in the very back of the box. Which plane is parallel to it? Well, parallel to this line is this one. And this one. This one. And this one. This is the front of the box. So if I want to know the plane that's parallel to the back, I simply need to name the front. My answer, plane A, B, F, E, is the answer to the plane parallel. Okay, folks, that's it. I hope you have a great night, and I'm excited to see what you can do in class tomorrow. Bye now.